Hey everyone, Aaron here. Today, I thought it would be cool to run you through a complete bike check of my new Intense HP6 race bike. This is a, a prototype race bike. Anybody that's been following my racing career the last year or two knows that myself and the rest of the Intense Factory racing team has been developing uh, these new downhill bikes and uh, this is basically gonna be what will be the finished version of it. Um, we've been riding and testing on this bike now for about three or four months since uh, the off season started. We're super happy with it. We have some, some new little updates coming for like the final World Cup race bikes. But this thing is pretty much all new from the ground up, so I thought it'd be cool to kind of run you guys through this bike and also my setup, the parts I run, and kind of everything that is my race bike. So let's jump right into it. All right, so I guess first things first, uh, we'll just start kind of at the front top and work our way back. Starting with the cockpit, uh, I run Renthal fat bars. Uh, I believe they're 30 mil rise. I always cut them down to uh, 790 on my downhill bikes, the width. I uh, run the Renthal stem. I've been running this setup for maybe 10 years now or something. My bar widths kind of will change from bike to bike. I, I started around 780 years ago and I've slowly just gotten a little wider and a little wider. I feel like for me 790 is the sweet spot with sort of like my height, arm reach, and kind of where I feel strongest on the bike to take an impact. I have a whole video I've done before on basically cockpit setup. So if you haven't watched that, check that out. I go super in depth on kind of why I do what I do with the cockpit. But yeah, on these, these are 790s. Um, on my trail bikes, I think I usually run like 785s and on like my dirt jump bikes, I go to like 780. So each bike, I actually vary just a little bit depending on the riding. Cause I feel like for me, you would think you would just run the same bar width all the time, and I think a lot of guys do that, but um, over the years, I kind of enjoy different widths for different bikes, so that's what I do. Um, so anyways, so yeah, Renthal bar stem always on all my bikes. I've been running ODI grips pretty much, I think, my entire career. I don't know that I've ever run anything else. We came out with the AG1 and AG2 signature grips, which are my Aaron Gwynn signature grip. So I have the AG2s on here. This is what I've been running for uh, pretty much ever since we came out with them years and years ago. Um, I love them. They're perfect for me. That's why I designed them. And, uh, <laughs> so they're always on all my bikes. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, when you get into brakes, I've got TRP, basically full drivetrain on this bike, everything. Now I run the TRP, uh, DHR Evo brakes. Um, I actually run some of the older levers cause I like the really big fat, chunky levers so that's something a little different that i do on my bikes that i don't think really anybody else does but the evo calipers all that kind of stuff is all standard um, we have some new trp rotors on this bike that are prototypes i believe that will go into production soon um, those have been really good so for me trp brakes um, i've said it in a lot of videos in the past but i love them this setup is super strong they're really snappy they got like a real quick bite which i like and you just like never mess with them. I don't think I've touched these brakes or messed with them since the World Cup race season. It's been three or four months. I can just ride them, wash the bike, ride them, wash the bike, repeat. And I'm never like trying to keep the pad contact right or bleeding the brakes all the time or all that stuff drives me crazy. So uh, it's kind of like set them and forget them, which I've never been able to do with other companies. So I can't say enough good things about TRP brakes. Uh, moving down to the suspension, Fox suspension. Um, all I've ever run Fox 40 fork through its many revisions over the year just keeps getting better and better, you know, over the years. I've got the Fox Float X2 shock on here, air shock. That is one thing that is maybe a little unique to me is I always seem to gravitate towards uh, air shocks instead of coil. They both work really good and depending on the bike, to me I could go kind of either way. I have raced the coil shock a few years in the past. Mostly I end up kind of gravitating back towards the air shock and I'm, I'm a little bit different that way than a lot of riders. Um, you do get better like small bump sensitivity out of a coil shock, especially off the top, but I really like the responsiveness and the holdup of air shocks. The way I kind of like naturally like to pump terrain and generate speed and just kind of my style, the air shock sort of reacts quicker to me with the inputs that I put into the bike. And so I kind of always end up going that route. So with that being said, with this new intense bike, it works really good with either shock. So I do want to do some more like extensive, like air versus coil testing before we get into the world cups. Um, but right now I got an air shock on it. It's working really good. So that's generally what I run. 
Yeah, so that's suspension. As far as setup goes on suspension, I won't dive too deep into it because we're there's a brand new bike. We're still kind of like testing and doing stuff, but I do run my my setup fairly firm. Not not as firm as maybe I used to. The Fox suspension has gotten so good over the years that you don't have to run your stuff super stiff just to get the bike to maintain geometry. A lot of people think that like in the past I notoriously ran like a really stiff setup. And a lot of people were like, oh, how does he, you know, run something so stiff or why would you do that? For me, it was just to keep the bike level and really rough stuff to keep it from pitching and diving and all that stuff on World Cup tracks. Um, so I really just ran it stiff so the bike would maintain geo um, and then just had to be strong enough to hold on to it. But now um, the progressivity, I think that's a word, <laughs> of the suspension and just how good everything's gotten, um, I can run myself a little bit softer now. And it still has that hold up deep in the travel that I want without being just like rattle you to death off the top. So um, they've done a great job with that. I still run my stuff fairly stiff, but I'd say it's more in the range with like other top World Cup guys. It's not like ridiculously different. Um, so yeah, suspension is there. We got the Fox 40 mud guard on here. Now that I live in Tennessee and ride in the mud, I uh, never actually really ran one of those ever, except at World Cups every once in a while. Now it's always on there because it's muddy a lot when we're riding. <laughs> um, so yeah, moving down to wheels and tires. Uh, wheels, the E13 LG1R carbon race wheels. It's their downhill race wheel. This has basically been more or less the downhill race wheel we've been running for, I don't know, maybe six, seven years at least. For me, they're they're awesome. We're kind of constantly tweaking, making them a little better too. We're working on some new stuff now. Uh, but these wheels for a carbon wheel have just been bulletproof. Like they, they've kind of developed the carbon and the different layups and stuff in a way that um, they just like almost never break. Um, if anybody's run carbon wheels, you know that nothing is impossible to break. But I would say on average, I might go through maybe two wheels in an entire race season, which for carbon wheels and as hard as we ride them through testing and racing and all that stuff, um, literally I might break a couple a year. I can't even remember the last one I break. It almost never happens. Um, so that's saying a lot with these because durability for sure at the World Cups when it comes to wheels is super important. And these, they've developed some different technology and stuff. So even when they do break, if I have a race run, usually they crack, but they hold together in a way where the tires will still have like maintain air. Um, and so you can still get to the bottom and finish your run. So these wheels, uh, they'd be really hard for me to get away from, to be honest, because they're just like bulletproof. They work really good um, and kind of do everything I want. So yeah, these wheels have been kind of my wheel of choice for a long time now. Um, they also have great warranty programs and a bunch of stuff on their carbon wheels. So if you guys are looking for carbon wheels, like as a consumer, um, they're pretty cool because if you're going to spend that money on a carbon wheel, it's nice to know that if the worst case scenario happens, they've kind of got your back on replacements. So side note on that, uh, tires, we are running V rubber. Now we signed with them uh, a year ago and have been really happy. Um, these are prototype tires on here right now that we raced at the last I don't know, half of the World Cups last season, probably. I can't talk too much about what we got going on with tires right now, but it's really, really good. Like I said, we've got a, new, a lot of new stuff coming out. We've been developing through the World Cup race season, um, and we're really happy with them. The setup is simpler than and just better performing than anything I've ever run. We don't have to run tire inserts. Um, I usually run probably in the range of 24 to 27 front tire pressure depending on track conditions um, and what type of course it is and in the rear I'm probably between 28 and 31 um, as far as PSI goes. So I run a little bit lower pressures than I've ever been able to run and I don't run inserts um, and these things just have really good feel. They've been really reliable as far as flats and tears and all that stuff goes the new stuff we're on. But yeah, they, they perform really well. They kind of do everything I want. So we are like super happy with these and we got some, some other stuff coming. So super excited about that. Um, so check those out. They'll be out real soon. Um, what else we got? Um, yeah, I run these E13. I think they're called the quick fill plasma valves. So it's basically just like a, a quick fill valve. You can squirt sealant straight into it without having to take your tire off, which is pretty cool. Um, we've run those valves for a long time. Um, all right, moving back towards the center of the bike. We are on TRP full drivetrain now. So brakes, shifter, derailleur, cassette, cranks. 
think that covers everything. This is kind of a newer prototype derailleur, but that thing has been same thing, bulletproof, solid, super quiet. Um, shifting is really smooth and reliable. The thing doesn't bounce all over the place and make all kinds of noise, which if you ask my mechanic, John, he knows I'm crazy about noises on my bike, so they have to be like dead quiet. Um, so John has some signature stuff on this derailleur. We've been working with them basically to, to get this final sort of like race ready version of the downhill derailleur for, for quite a while. And I feel like we really nailed it now. So really happy with the whole drivetrain. Uh, TRP cranks now, we just started running last year. We have, um, I think these are 165s is the uh, length of them. Um, I've kind of honestly gone between 165, 170, 175 through the years. Um, I feel like different reaches of cranks work good for different things. Even on the downhill bike, I kind of like the 175s because they put your legs a little further apart, which I felt like gave me kind of a more solid base to stand on. Uh, 165s give you a little more clearance off the ground when you're pedaling, obviously, and on the downhill bike with how slack and low they are. That's pretty good. So I've kind of migrated back in that direction. So I think these are 165s now. Um, but honestly, I could kind of ride all three and they all work pretty good for me. So I'm not crazy picky. This is just kind of what we've been running uh, the last year. So that's Crank's uh, chain guide, E13. I believe it's the LG1R chain guide. We've been running these chain guides for, I don't know, 10 years or something. They're bulletproof. They work really well. You can dial them in with like the size of your front chain ring and all that stuff really good. So yeah, that's always on my, our bikes. I guess we'll move into something a little unique at the front of the bike that I didn't mention. We run Works Components has been cool enough to hook us up with uh, different types of headsets and they do custom offsets, reaches, all that stuff for us. Um, so it's super helpful, especially when we're prototyping new bikes, because a lot of times you're kind of playing with different options when you have a prototype bike. You want to know like exactly where you want the head angle and all this different stuff. Um, and each bike kind of functions and works sometimes a little different than on paper, just slightly. So they gave us like all these different options of headsets. So when we're testing new bikes and we are trying to finalize geo numbers for production and all that kind of stuff, we can really make sure everything is spot on. So I believe this headset is like a plus three reach. Um, I've also got some different bushings and there's something in the shock and there are bushings that are a little bit, it's like a half degree offset. Um, so this is stuff that'll go away when the final bike is done because we've kind of decided on our numbers now. Um, so you won't need any of that to kind of get it where I want it. But reach of frame as a bonus note, um, I'm pretty much at 465 mil reach on my, on all my downhill bikes. That has been my sweet spot. Um, this one is currently at 468, I believe, because of some of the other offset stuff we're working on, but my race bike will go back to 465. Um, I'm super picky about that. And <laughs> when I find that number over the years, it's like, so even right now it's a 468, I can ride it fast, but it's not, I'm like, I'd rather have 465. So I'm really picky about that. So that's the reach on my bikes. Um, uh, yeah, so Works Components has been doing that for a long time. We get kind of all the different options we want, which has been really cool. So, uh, yeah, moving back towards the center. I've got HT, these new HT X3 pedals. These pedals are basically just the newer updated version of the X2 pedal that they had forever, which is my like all-time favorite pedal until these ones come out. Um, I run them on my downhill bikes, my trail bikes, my BMX bikes, everything. I just love this pedal. The contact and how you clip in and out is like a solid snap in and out. Um, They're both easy and hard to get out. That, that meaning like when you wanna get out, you can, and when you don't, you don't come out <laughs> of the clip when you wanna stay in. So um, these pedals, I've run multiple shoes with these pedals over the year. Uh, years and it just seems like everything they just work like so solid they they just perform they have the right amount of flow everything I love uh, the x3 as I said is just the updated version of the x2 pedal it's basically just a little lighter a little bit slimmer on the outside but it has the same overall feel and design um, it really allows the shoe to kind of feel connected with the outside of the pedal so that you have this like kind of almost flat pedal connection feel like a big footprint on the bottom of your shoe while being clipped in. Um, so anyways, those are the pedals I've run basically forever and I love them. Um, so that's that, moving towards the back. Other little details, I guess, on this bike, we run these STFU. Um, they're kind of just like chain, mm, they're basically like 
anti-slap devices for the chain. It just keeps the chain from bouncing around and making noise and bouncing off the frame and all that. Like I said, I'm super picky about like noise and all that. And so we just like to keep the bike as quiet as possible. Honestly, with this bike, the way it's designed and kind of how we've dialed it all in, I don't know that we'll have to keep running those because um, it functions pretty good, doesn't have a lot of chain slap and the way we put the rubber and stuff, it's pretty quiet, but it is nice to kind of keep your chain from bouncing around too crazy. So we've been running those for the last couple of years and uh, they work great. Uh, okay, so moving on to the last couple of things on the bike, it would be the saddle or seat. I call it a seat, I don't call them saddles. I think it sounds weird, but technically I think that's the bike term. Uh, we've been running Smagne seats or saddles <laughs> on our bikes and uh, it's pronounced Smagne, I believe. So don't say Smanny. That was my bad. <laughs> um, but these seats have been great. It's actually really comfortable for how thin it is and it's insanely light. So downhill bikes, obviously uh, seats aren't super important because you don't hardly ever sit on them, but you want it to be strong, light. And for me, I want it to look good because if you have an ugly looking seat, it really destroys literally your whole bike and I just, I can't get past it. So anyways, we've been messing with different designs. Uh, we'll have a finalized downhill seat that'll be coming out um, here shortly, but this is the prototype I've been running and racing lately. Um, we've got some random seat post on here, honestly, that we found laying around the shop at Intense because we don't have a seat post sponsor. And when I put this on here, I needed a seat post. So uh, we have no affiliation with them. This is the standard seat post. Yeah, so that's everything you can see. Other than that, we run uh, Kogel bearings, Kogel bottom brackets. They've been awesome, um, especially at the World Cups when you're washing bikes and mud and like just the wear and tear on these things is like insane on race weekends, especially when it's muddy. Um, so Kogel bearings and bottom brackets have been the go-to for years for us now. So you can't see them, but they're always in all of our bikes. Um, but yeah, so that's the bike. Um, this bike basically, as I said, is the latest uh, prototype from Intense that we've been working on a long time. This bike will, I don't know if I can say this or not, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Um, this more or less will be a production bike down the line. So we're finally there where the race bike production bike will be available to the public. Um, we've got a couple more cool little tweaks and stuff on this to get the weight down and aesthetics are gonna be pretty sick on this thing when it's fully done. I think it already looks amazing, especially for a rough prototype. Um, but yeah, this thing has been in the works a long time. And honestly, all the parts on this bike, we really work hard with the sponsors to like really try to get every little bit out of the product. So whether it's the tires or the wheels or suspension and brakes, uh, frame, the seat, the whatever, everything, as you can see, is kind of a blend of prototype parts on this because we're always trying to like make things a little bit better and get stuff perfect. So I will say that this bike is the happiest all around bike I've had um, probably ever. And I feel like going into this 2023 race season, we really have everything we need to win equipment wise um, from the ground up. Like I said, all the parts, everything is basically exactly where we've been working to get it to. So I feel like now there's really no excuses. <laughs> I just need to go out and perform and uh, start winning races. So I'm very thankful for all the hard work and love that the sponsors have basically put into this whole kind of setup over the last few years. I feel like we're in a really good spot. So that's my race bike. Hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Wow.